Hello and welcome to Don't Feed the Geeks, presented by the Long Island Comic Guys, the masters of the geeky verse. Well, welcome back, Geek Freaks. I'm TC. I'm JJ. And I'm Toy Story. And we have a very special guest with us today, Mr. Ken Knudsen. Knudsen? Knudsen. Knudsen. Close. Right, I knew I was going to mess it up. <laughs> uh, we're going to be talking about his new Kickstarter project for his book, My Monkey's Name is Jennifer. It <laughs> launches today, which is Monday the 13th, oh. is when this is uh, launching on uh, Kickstarter. It's an omnibus of the six issues. And was there a trade involved with this too? Uh, uh, a second omnibus? trade, yeah. Second trade? So it's going to be like 200 plus pages. Awesome. That's awesome. Very cool stuff. But before we jump into that, you know what we love to do before we talk about um, the big project? We want to know how you got there. So we want to get your geek origin story. Ken, how did you get into this crazy world? Uh, I mean... I remember drawing and reading comics as far back as I can remember. And the big geek moment for me was one day, uh, I'm from Long Island, by the way. Um, oh, nice. in, East Islip, in East Islip, I was living in an apartment complex and reading a comic on the front stoop. And my upstairs neighbor came down for his jog and he stopped and he's like, Ken, do you like comics? And I said, yes, Mr. Kurt, I do. Cause it was very polite. <laughs> uh, and he ran, he's like, hold on a second. He ran back upstairs and came back to the stands with this huge box and dropped it in front of me. He's like, this is for you. Oh and, my God. <laughs> I mean, Toy Story may not get this, but back in the 80s, there was no uh, trade paperbacks or anything. So when they, <laughs> when, when publishers did farm out like collections, they were like in a uh, paperback book size. So it was a box full of those. Like that was That's my cool. first exposure to Daredevil, um, the X-Men. Um, it was crazy awesome. And I'm like, this is the best day ever. Wow. <laughs> how, how old were you? I was like six, seven, maybe. That's, that's awesome. like Christmas, like Merry Christmas. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool to have like a moment like that, you know, that you, that yeah. you distinctly remember. That's cool. So, I'm, I'm actually was neighbors with you. I'm from the uh, Babylon Village, so I. Oh, nice. We probably passed each other. <laughs> <laughs> probably on one of those crowded Long Island railroad trains. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> that's, how, that's how me and JJ met, actually. <laughs> yeah. That's hysterical. So, so how did that lead into you deciding you wanted to get into the business? Uh, I mean, I, I kept drawing and reading comics. And then in high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, and I was working at the ISO Triplex. And one of the managers there went to School of Visual Arts. And he's like, you like drawing. Um, have you thought about going to art school? And I looked into it. Um, I checked it out. And School of Visual Arts has teachers like Walt Simonson, Klaus Jansen, Joe Orlando, uh, John Ruggieri, Jack Potter, um, like all formative teachers for a lot of uh, comic creators that came up that I know we all know and love, like John Paul Leon and Sean Martinborough uh, are from that school, uh, among others. Uh, so, yeah, like when I checked it out, I'm like, yeah, I think this is what I want to do. Yeah, that's cool. But by, by the way, I'm sorry to interject. Is that your studio behind you? Because it looks pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm part of a. This is actually the first time I've ever had a studio that was not where I lived, in like a living space. Wow. Um, so it's – I'm in Charlotte now, so this is a building okay. that was, um, I think, a mechanical warehouse that got chopped up. So I'm I'm part of a studio where the, the main artist, she does fine art, sculpture, um, like a little bit of everything. There are tattoo artists here. There are woodworkers. Um, it's, it's a very interesting environment to be in. Oh, that's cool. Like, wow. Some creative juices flowing, right, from all different creators. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> huh. Very cool. So you've um, we were we were looking into your background stuff. So you've done some stuff on like Wolverine as well. What 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 run did you do on that exactly? Because we were having trouble nailing down which run it was. <laughs> um, I got to do a Wolverine story with um, but it was with the writer that was doing Wolverine at the time, Dan Way, and okay. he was looking to do his own line of indie stuff. And I was one of the artists he, he looked, you know, he looked at and we talked and we liked the idea. And he's like, yeah, he's like, how would you feel about doing like a Wolverine story with me? I'm like, I think that would be great. <laughs> he, and it was part of Marvel's uh, like a line of February books. So it was romance oriented. He's like, yeah, it's romance, but don't worry. There's Nazis in it. <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> 
He loves to fight Nazis. So that's, yeah. that's, 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 that's hilarious. Wouldn't be a good comic book if there was no Nazis. I mean, yes. We, Nobody we on another, the cover punching them out or anything like we that. We have another friend, Billy Tucci. That's, he just puts Nazis everywhere. It just, just it makes the book. <laughs> oh, my God. And it, you don't just do uh, the comic book stuff, right? You also do like storybook and animation uh, work as well. What? Yeah, I mean, if you talk to really any comic creator, we, with very few exceptions, you've yeah. got to be a little bit all over the place. Um, and I know for me, at least, it's fun. I get to learn a lot more that I bring over to the comics. So I've done storyboards. I've been part of animation stuff, um, movie poster designs, uh, illustration. Yeah. Uh, so it's – and oh, for a lot of those – I got to work in studios um, with, again, new artists. So it's great to be around fresh ideas and to help break that mindset of like, no, I don't know how to do that. I, I don't think I can do that. And you're like, well, well, we can figure that out. Yeah. Nice. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Was there something yeah. you, you had to do where you were like, I have no idea how to even go about that? <laughs> um, the first time I had to do digital art, I was so mm. frozen. Um, <laughs> That I was texting some friends. I'm like, uh, so how do I get started on this? <laughs> uh, as uh, an aside, when I came down here, uh, I got to paint my first mural, um, wow. and I didn't know how to start this. And thankfully, one of my friend, the, one of the few first people I met down here, is a, a known muralist, both Charlotte throughout the U.S. and even overseas. And he's like, I can help you with this. He's like, <laughs> he's like the biggest thing is try and be a little careful at the top of the ladder. <laughs> That's good advice. Wow. It is good advice. <laughs> At least so when I finished it, so when I finished it, it was a mural of Jennifer. Uh, my friends were like, "Wow, you got the top done in one shot." I'm like, because it was terrifying up there, and I was, <laughs> I was, I was not balancing myself properly. I had hands full of paint, and I'm like, this needs to be one and done. <laughs> I crazy. saw that mural. It's on your Instagram page. That's pretty cool that you did that. Yeah. The, the, the one of the comic book. JJ, you had a, you had a question that you wanted to ask along the storyboard line, right? So yeah, you were. I saw that you noticed you worked with Brian Oaks. What, yes. what was what was that? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because I mean, he's a director and he's done a lot of stuff, um, you know, with with Disney Plus and Netflix. And um, uh, what did you do with him? What did you work with him on all that? Uh, well, I mean, Brian's an awesome guy for a Red Sox fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, uh, Brian and uh, the Oak Studio was great. Uh, I came in there because they were looking to branch out. At the time, they were doing graphics for uh, title sequences for documentaries, and they were really good. Um, and he got the chance to work with Busboy Studios, the, the John, uh, John Stewart from The Daily Show, uh, oh, wow. his production company. And they were doing uh, Night of Too Many Stars, and that's one night event. Uh, it's mostly George Soros backed. And it's the biggest fundraiser for homeless, uh, for, for helping the homeless in New York City. So that theme that year was um, Robin Hood as a superhero. And he's like, do you think you could do that? I'm like, I think I could do that. <laughs> cool. um, awesome. So along with illustration, I learned how to do limited animation because that was part of it too. Like we, we really pushed it. Like they really just wanted illustrations and Brian and his team were like, so how do you feel about if we do limited animation? I'm like, um, I'd be very interested to see how this works. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So another learning experience. Exactly. And that was key too, because uh, he brought me on for a couple of different projects. Um, one of them was for one of my art heroes, David Geffen had a, a documentary and he's not photographed often. Like he doesn't like it. So mm -hmm. they needed something visual to fill in. Like, and Brian pitched to me like, I have this uh, this awesome artist, Ken Newton, I've worked with. Um, and I have some like this dark animation style that I think would go well for some of the more some of the deeper parts of the story. And that was a blast to work on. Nice. That's cool. That's exciting. Yeah, I, I saw some of his work. It looks amazing. Yeah, I know he did the Marvel 616, which I didn't see it yet. But just the snippets was yeah, it was must have been a cool project to work on. Yeah, yeah, it was <laughs> nice. So, so it's funny, like scrolling through your Instagram and we were all like actually talking about this yesterday. It's, it's so interesting to like see your art because you have such like versatility and like, I feel like so, you'll draw something one way and then like, uh, you'll have another like, you know, piece of art that looks completely different. Like, how did you go through that? Do you, do you have like a style you'd attribute to like your art or is it kind of just like. Does it depend on the, on whether you're using paints or drawing yeah. or anything like that. 
Uh, at least for me, the idea will help decide what what medium I'm doing. Um, like every artist in high school, you, you think like, oh, I've locked into this one style and this is the only thing I'm ever going to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, like a transformative experience was going to school of visual arts and really trying to absorb and learn from all the teachers there. Um, it was an eye-opening experience that not every student treats it that way. Um, they like at least half the opening class thought treated like a lunch period almost. Um, but the teachers really respond when they see that you're you're putting the work in and you're trying to take in this brand new information. Mm-hmm. So that's when I got to learn uh, like oil bars and charcoal and different kinds of inking, um, some collage. Uh, it's again like being for me the best thing was being exposed to as many different art artists mm-hmm. and artist perspectives as I could manage. Cool. Would you say so, there's any like specific like artists or creators that were kind of like really like your influences? Um, I I really respond to very graphic artists. Like so, I was psyched that Walt Simonson and Klaus Janssen taught there. Um, John Ruggieri became one of my, my favorite teacher, and he has a fashion background. Um, but he was the main teacher for John Paul Leon, whose style I really love. Hmm. Um, Mike Mignola, of course. Um, some of the classmates like uh, Jerry Ma, I'm a huge fan of his. Um, I, I love high contrast, but on the to- in terms of color, I love very painterly styles. Like like I'm rereading Low right now, and those early issues where Greg Tocchini, I think that's how you say his. That's I, a I great. Know. That's a. I haven't heard of that book in a while, but I love that book. Love. <laughs> it just wrapped last year, I think. Yeah. And I read I it at the very it. beginning when it started coming out. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, I waited for a while and I'm just, I'm starting to reread the whole run again. Um, like that's how I'm starting my mornings now with breakfast. I'm like, all right, we get to read another issue. Uh, you know, like he digitally colors and that's amazing. Um, Jose Villareva, uh, the guy who I got locked out with getting uh, to color for my Wolverine story. I love his color. Like his first jobs were Jay Lee. And yeah. I loved that combination. It's funny because I, I feel like there's a little bit of that vibe that you can see in like that Wolverine stuff. Because I've seen like some of the stuff that you posted from the Wolverine. And I said, I, I feel like there's a little bit of like that Jay Lee vibe to it too. But again, like your art is just so versatile that like I see like different styles or like different, you know, you know interpretations depending on what you're doing. It's, it's, a, it's a really good way that you described it. I think they're probably the first person we've had who's really described it that way. To yes, us. that's cool. Do you have a favorite or not really because they're so different? Like favorite, like painting, drawing, anything like that. Um, for me, it, it varies. Like whatever my tastes are. Like, mm-hmm. um, I'm super psyched that Kent Williams has been doing these black and white brush uh, and ink uh, crow drawings. I think they're commissions. I don't know, but they're amazing. <laughs> um, and then I got to see uh, somebody posted that Kevin Nolan apparently did early Batman animated uh, character designs, and like, and those are completely different looks. One super messy, one super tight. Yeah. Um, and I love them both. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it is like, um, it, it's what suits it. You're, you're so right about that. Our friend, it's a, we have a good friend who, um, he, he's, uh, he works in our comic, our local comic shop. And we were talking about it last night. I was like, oh man, it's like, we got to let, um, our buddy Oz know about your art. And I'm sure he's listening because he listens all the time. I was like, I was like, he, he's definitely going to love that style. So Absolutely. You, might, you, you might be hearing from him soon about commissions <laughs> if they're open. Um, nice. but let, let's go into it. Let's talk about my monkey's name is Jennifer. All right. But let's start it off with the obvious. <laughs> Who is Jennifer? <laughs> Uh, Jennifer is a monkey and he is not happy. Um, Jennifer is a monkey and he's not happy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I got the idea because, you know, for some reason, Marvel and DC were not stomping down our doors. So, uh, a bunch of buddies <laughs> and I, after graduating, graduating SVA, were like, we should do our own things. And I had no idea. So when I got off my very sad train ride from Manhattan back to Long Island, I sat <laughs> down in front of the TV and. The best Simpsons episode ever came on, the one with Mojo the Helper Monkey. And I'm like, I'll draw a monkey comic. I'm like, I'll make him angry. And for me, my writing is basically what do I want to draw. So I'm like, he'll be angry because there's a little girl and she calls him Jennifer and they have a dress. She puts him in a dress, matching dresses all the time. They have tea parties, stuffed animals. Uh, her parents constantly bonk him on the head and call him Bad Monkey. 
Uh, for safety precautions, they did have him neutered into Claude. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's amazing. All right. <laughs> okay. So the angry, uh, I got the idea. I'm like, I'll just have like a stream of angry uh, thought boxes for the monkey. Mm-hmm. And a lifetime of working in retail meant that that, that anger flew pretty, pretty easily. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. <laughs> that's, a, that's great. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I saw in the press release that you, that you talked a little bit about how you were shopping this around cons in the early days of it. Yeah, um, I was super anxious because the first time I ever went to San Diego Comic Con, um, I was walking around with a with a portfolio that was essentially what became issue number one. Mm-hmm. Um, if anyone's listening out there, when you're walking around with a portfolio, uh, have it reduced in copies to regular size, <laughs> just so it's easier for editors. Or were they to like understand. huge? Just yeah, eleven by seventeen. Yeah. Because holy fuck, was that heavy to carry around. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've, um, seen, we've seen guys carrying those things yeah. around. It doesn't look like it's fun. Yeah. Your arm gets tight. Like, it's just, like, mm-hmm. it's not good. Um, <laughs> so I'm nervous. Nice. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I was never really super into indies because there were really weren't too many comic stores around at that time, especially ones that had anything indie-wise uh, because most of them were comics and baseball card uh, combos in very yeah. tiny stores. So... I got there and like I didn't know. I thought it was just all superheroes. And I've got this book about a little girl in a monkey in a dress. And my anxiety shot to the roof because the first three or four guys I talked to, they're like, I feel like I've seen this somewhere before. Like kind of dismiss- dismissive. And I'm like, oh, no, what am I doing? <laughs> like, did you accidentally rip somebody off? <laughs> and I'm like, is there another guy walking around with a monkey comic like this? Um but the fourth guy I saw, uh, because we were in New York time, we were just, uh, my buddy Jerry and I were hustling, talking to like as many people on that Thursday night as we could. The fourth guy, he saves me. He's like, oh, this is the thing Peter David reviewed. Because a month prior, I was at a, a Big Apple Con, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Peter David's one of my favorite writers. I think, JJ, we're going to talk about this. Um, Aquaman, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I was psyched to I, I psyched to talk to him, but he, I guess he wasn't feeling well because he was getting ready to leave early. But he hadn't packed up everything yet. So I came up and I said, "Mr. David, I'm a huge fan. Uh, love Aquaman, Captain Marvel, Hulk, um, Spidey, Twenty Nine, like all this." He's like, "Well, thank you." And I'm like, and I hand him I'm like, "I see you're leaving. Is it okay if I hand you this packet? It's my new comic. I would love to hear any feedback." And he immediately snapped into business mode. He's like, "Is your name and contact information on the front of every page?" And I said, yes, sir. He's like, okay, I'll take it. So a big big thing. (laughs) Yeah, um, because that's something that you learn. Is that a thing in the comic world? Yes. Um, Anybody handing out samples, um, again, make it reduced. Like 8.5 by 11 is fine. But make sure your name and your email address are on the front of every page. Because there's a good chance, like it gets passed around or it gets lost, yeah. Um, and they can only find one page. And if your your info is on only like the front or the back, that's that that doesn't help you. That makes sense. That's great. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I didn't hear from him, but at San Diego, uh, C- he was writing uh, his weekly column for CBR at the time, and they asked him to, apparently to review things. So he reviewed a movie, movie, um, a newspaper comic strip, and my comic. And he ran the first three panels. And you didn't and know that? No. <laughs> oh, my God. And they were giving that issue away for free at San Diego. So I was like, oh, <laughs> like this whole trip has changed now. Wow. Wow. Um, so what, did ta- review, what did he talk about in the review? For the um, his review was like, he's like, I don't understand why this is happening. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> he, he gave it the best rating ever. He's like, I rate this three and a half JCs. He's like, that's how many times I said, Jesus Christ, while reading it. <laughs> that's great. That is he's awesome. like that. He's like the half is like I just went, jeez. <laughs> um, but yeah, he was like, he's like, I know what to make of this. I hope it gets published and picked up so other people get to look at it and not know what it means. Um, <laughs> so like for me, like when people like because everyone had looked at it, like, but you're just so over and inundated with stuff in San Diego. If, yeah. If right. you guys have ever been there, um, it's a magical place. But mm-hmm. how many people first a day look- do they have coming up to them saying, "Hey, take a look at this"? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, That's we great. we That's we great. unfortunately yeah. haven't we haven't gone to the San Diego one yet. We've been going to New York for probably the last ten plus years, 
and a lot of little ones around here. So yeah, yeah. it's a lot of the same though. I'm sure it's, it's the yeah. same. Yeah, I mean, once New York really established itself that first year, it basically the country split. Like, all right, so San Diego is awfully expensive and difficult to even get like a <laughs> fucking hotel room. Yeah. Um, so like a lot of people just stopped going um, yeah. and focused on New York. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense, like, especially if you have, like, that split between the country. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, cool. I mean, SLG ended up uh, picking it up at first, and when I was talking to uh, the owner, Dan, um, when uh, he, him and the crew came to New York for the first couple of years, he's like, I don't think I can come back again because it's so expensive to ship everything, <laughs> and I have to have the whole team here. we got to find a hotel. Um, we got to hire people to put this stuff together um, and then break it down. The rent uh, for the floor space is yeah. comparable to San Diego. He's like, I don't think I could. I don't think many people can do two San Diegos. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough. I I feel bad for a lot of the creators for that. It's because just it's, it's a tough show. I, I mean, like especially you know we know vendors, a lot of different people in the business. It's 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 a big commitment to get into those type of shows. But I mean, like sometimes it could be it could be a you know a home run it when you when you do go. But you know, yeah. yeah. You know, Look at in your case, that's awesome. That's- yeah. That was that was amazing. That's cool. Um, so let's talk about. It. So so what do you get with the Kickstarter here? So it's 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 out today. What are the different um, tiers? You know, what's the standard tier come with? Uh, the standard tier is the book. Uh, like I said before, it's over two hundred pages of monkey fun stuff. Um, the standard cover has my pencils with Klaus Jansen inks. Um, wow. He had to nice. ink it twice because I used too soft a pencil lead the first time, and oh, yeah. <laughs> it just smeared away. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, uh, that's the standard, like the, the variant cover is Walt Simonson drawing my characters. Um, uh, like I have all those, uh, Klaus inked the first two covers, of the original series, and then this, and then Walt did, uh, his thing. So I have those three pieces framed in my house and I would tell people like, if there's a fire, I'm grabbing that and then I'll try and wake anyone else up. I, <laughs> <laughs> Respect. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, and as you go, like you can add on commissions. Um, I don't know if you guys saw, but I'm quite the uh, Keanu Reeves fan, and I, I, I anticipate getting some John Wick commissions. Yeah. Um, or Neo now because they released uh, the that trailer. The trailer. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I I love that um, the the John Wick stuff too that you've done. I've been going through that. It's 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 really fun. It's like that's like it's such a great style the way you do that in too. It's kind of like it almost has like, like that. Uh, you know, not so much Jolly, but it's like it's a mix of like three different artists that I know, and like it's just a cool combination. So anyone who hasn't seen it, please, um, please make sure you're following Ken on Instagram too. He he posts a lot of fun stuff. Uh, you, all right, so we got that. We got the uh, rewards. Are you doing any of the original pages as rewards? Not of the Jenner first story. Um, okay. I mean, that for me. That and the Wolverine stuff, I will never part with. Mm-hmm. Um, That's fair. <laughs> I, I did, I did do some uh, original new drawings of Jennifer. Oh, nice. Um, that I'm already regretful for giving up. Uh, but those are part <laughs> of like can't keep uh, everything, I, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, those are three new things um, for tiers, like the book and one of those. Um, I'm doing a, a limited print of Bony Man, the, the skull head guy uh, in the suit. He's a good guy, by the way. <laughs> Um, there are, uh, there's an option. If you just want to give me 20 bucks to have a drink, that's, that's appreciated too. (laughs) There you go. I need to start a Kickstarter like that. (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm a, I'm a big Kickstarter supporter. Like I, I, I back so much. Yeah, We'll we'll, we'll definitely be getting at least, I I can't, I can't tell you what tier yet. I've got to, I've got to sit through and ponder, but (laughs) You, you, Kicks, it's, I'm glad you guys mentioned that because Kickstarter is this magical thing. Um, you know, back in the day, like you had a you had a hustle around um, conventions and hope to hope to find a small publisher because yeah. they don't they don't make all the conventions either because it's logistical nightmare on the mm-hmm. best days, uh, much less having to travel to Wizard World Philly and <laughs> you're looking around like there are no other companies here. What am I doing? Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's especially great right now, considering all the news with Action Lab uh, finally coming out. Yeah, I, I, you, there's so much good stuff on Kickstarter, and uh, you know, I've got, I don't know, I can't tell you how much I've supported, especially for comic books. You know, I, there's a lot of 
electronic stuff I've I've gotten from that, you know, I've I've backed and everything else. But the comics exploded, and um, it, it's just it's absolutely amazing what's out there. And some of these, some of these, I'm going to say more than eighty percent of them, they're great stories. You know, yeah, I I, I haven't had a bad one yet. To be honest with you, um, I, I guess I that's great lucky. to hear. It's it's been fantastic. Mm. And, it's, yeah, I mean, we uh, there's been a lot of other guys that we've we've done like Billy's Billy Tucci's another guy that we've done a bunch for. We did Jimmy's. I don't know if you know Chris Campana. He's from Jersey too. He's another artist as well. Uh, he's that name sounds familiar. Circuit, um, but he's another guy who's done some uh, pretty cool stuff. Yeah, he, he was actually nominated for some Ringo stuff last year. But oh, nice. Um, yeah, there was a there's a lot of um, you know different projects that it's it's a good place mm -hmm. for I think like people who are who have this great story like you said mm -hmm. you know it's it's just another place that they can go as like and they can tell it how they want to and put it out how they want to exactly right right, right. right. Yeah. like because yeah you could shop it around and you might get picked up at a show but then you got to deal with you know you can't really always release things the way you want to right. Yeah, and I'm, I'm fortunate that I'm friends with uh, a bunch of current comic creators and one mm -hmm. of them is Jared Fletcher and. He's known as a letterer, but he's also more known from artist, an artist uh, standpoint as a, a designer. And the one panel I've ever gotten to go to was him and a bunch of guys here at Heroes uh, Con. And they talked about production of books. And he was talking about Paper Girls that he worked on with oh, yeah. um, Cliff Chang. And he's like, we spent days getting paper samples. How do we want the cover? How do we want the pages? What kind of color saturation do we want? <laughs> uh, and it was it was school. Um, so like, I know sometimes publishers will want to publish something in a smaller size for shipping and storage, or they have a set kind of, um, gloss cover design. Um, for this, I like being able to figure it out on my own, what I, yeah. what I would want in my hands. Yeah. yeah. So Kickstarter is definitely, um, a boon for artists to be able, if they want to be able to control as much of it as they can. That's funny you bring up Paper Girls. I weirdly distinctly remember picking up that book and thinking, oh, this this cover's nice. You know, the, the, the whatever, material, whatever type of paper they used on it. Yeah. yeah. yeah it, it's funny because, you know, I, I like when, when Tucci was first getting on the whole Kickstarter thing, like I was over at his house and he was texting me and be like, well, what kind of paper should I do? Should I do a gloss? Should, what kind of stock? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> and you're asking somebody, like, I read the books. I don't know what, what all this means. And I'd be at his house and be showing me samples. I'm like, this feels great. <laughs> it, it's it's funny. You see that stuff, though. But, like, even if you don't understand, like, the thought process that went through it, like, it translates to you. You, you can always, like, you get that, like, feeling that it's special. And, like, even if you don't know all, like, the background information, I feel like we all, like, come to, like, certain books and, like, certain pieces of art and just like wow like you know there's some there's something about this that you know isn't like you know just a regular run of the mill um you know piece of art <laughs> or whatever it is <laughs> exactly and like i want to say like in the last couple of years image really pushed that forward where mm -hmm. you know once the original creators did their stuff then you started getting different people like i love rick remender anything he wants to write yeah. i love yeah. and each of yeah. his books like they're they're really well designed like, like you were saying before, like they feel different, each one. Um, and that's on purpose. And I love all of that. You read Black Science, I take it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a good one. <laughs> um, Black Science, I love Deadly Class. Mm -hmm. um, oh. Low. Um, yeah. Uh, You're going to make me go reread Low now. I haven't read that yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to find it. <laughs> that's great. That's great. So I know you're in the throes right now of my monkey's name is Jennifer, but are there any other projects you have in the pipeline that you're willing to share or things that you hope to happen soon? Yeah. Um, in the beginning of COVID, like everyone else, um, I was allowed the time to focus on work. <laughs> um, so if you liked my uh, like oil bar drawings and paintings of like the, the John Wick stuff, I did a comic like that. Um, that I didn't think I was going to be able to do. And I, I messed around. I was working with a, a writer, um, my friend Scott Brian Wilson. He's currently writing uh, the Pennyworth miniseries for DC. Um, I told him, like, this is what I want to try because it was a very ambitious script. Lots of time jumps, um, different designs from masks and vehicles and uniforms, like a lot of stuff I hadn't tried before. So I'm like, uh, if I'm going to push, I want to push. And he's like, well, what do you want to do for color? And I'm, I'm like, I'm, I showed him some sketches and it was basically 
a mash of watercolors and oil bars and then some heavy <laughs> razor blade scraping. And he's like, <laughs> I love this. He's like, wow. do you think you could do it with panels? I'm like, I'll find out. <laughs> wow. So I would send the pages almost immediately after I did it. Um, and he's like, this is working really well. Um, wow. So, I mean, we, we were starting to pitch it when COVID kicked in again, when um, like when Diamond canceled everything yeah. and conventions weren't doing anything like no no one was talking um so after like a few days we're like all right so we're gonna hold off on this we're gonna wait until things start to settle and uh companies figure out what their lines are gonna be and what new stuff if any they're looking at so i'm really psyched for that to to see the light of day i was really happy with that that's cool. that sounds pretty exciting. I'm I'm curious to find out what it is. We'll have to we'll have to follow for more. <laughs> it's it's sci-fi noir. Um, yeah. So like it was right in my wheelhouse in terms of uh, art style. You definitely have our attention with that. Sure. <laughs> awesome. Well, right. uh, thanks again, Ken. This has been a lot of fun. Um, we do know. Uh, well, let, let, let's let's to take hit the brakes for a second. So. You're an Aquaman fan. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> can, can you tell us why? <laughs> he gives me so much crap. So this is what I drink water out of water. Every oh, day. That's funny. I love that. Um, Jim, put up like, the Growing up, um, I don't know what it was. Uh, maybe it was like the budding artist. But I love his uni <laughs> <laughs> Yes. That's so old. <laughs> um. I, I love the orange, yellow, green. Um, I love that he's underwater. Um, I love the aqua powers, even though they gave him like water fastballs for some reason in the cartoons. Um, <laughs> the, the comics, they, they throw him around, but like talking to people who don't know so much about Aquaman, one of my friends is like, I just saw the Justice League Unlimited, whereas the villains talking about what they did. And like, and holy fuck, Black Manta is evil because. Um, <laughs> Apparently, he said uh, he summarized the old Keith Giffen series from the 80s. And like everyone, every villain's talking, like, I did this, I did that. And Black Man is like, Yeah, well, uh, Aquaman were fighting. I accidentally killed his dad. And then he, with the fight continuing, accidentally killed my dad. And then I suffocated his baby, which broke his marriage and his mind. <laughs> and everyone's like, Whoa. <laughs> and my friend's like, Is that what happened? I'm like, That's what happened. <laughs> yep. That's, That's great. great. Yeah. yeah, I you know I it's I uh, it's been my favorite since I was a kid. I, I was a you know in the navy. I I swam. I was a diver for a long time after the navy. I, you know it's it's a water thing. I <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Know, I'm four issues away from having a full run of uh, volume one of Aquaman. Oh, you know, and, that's amazing. You know, it's I'm getting most of them are graded, which is crazy. You know, it's you should see the wall and you know I've got Black Manta statue right here. It's a prime one. Oh. That is you know, sweet. there and you know, I got all my little Aquaman stuff in there, and I see the figure. Yeah. It, it's, it's there, nineteen sixty four. You know, it's that's funny. It's great. I all right, so I, I, I guess that, that's a semi valid reason. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's. <laughs> <laughs> I get crumped with jellyfish. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy to meet another guy. This is great. <laughs> Oh, there's, man, you guys should start a convention. There's yeah. not many of us. <laughs> Aquaman fan convention. Uh, there, there'd be two of us. <laughs> oh, you'd have like seven people. Show up. Okay. And then Jason Momoa would show up and hug Yeah, him. there you go. There you go. There you then go. you'd get more people. And then everybody yeah. else would show up. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. All right, uh, that was awesome. Uh, well, thanks thanks for going into that with us too, Ken. <laughs> uh, of course. Every day is a good day to talk about Aquaman. Yeah. So um, the the Kickstarter is out today, guys. If you haven't already, please hit up Kickstarter. It's uh, it's under my monkey's name is Jennifer. It's also under Ken's name, right? You can search it under your name as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel confident about that. Yeah. Take take a look. <laughs> pick your tier. Support it. If you want to go the route where you're just buy, giving them twenty bucks to drink, that's cool too. Uh, but please support it. We'll definitely be, um, you know, picking up an issue for sure. For sure. We'll be sharing those when they come in as well. Uh, Ken, what's the best way for people to get in contact with you? If they want to reach uh, out. I try, and, I try and make it as easy as possible. Um, it's my name on social media, Ken Knudsen. Um, ideally, by the time you get to the D in the last name, uh, 
Instagram's like, all right, we know who it is. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So nice. he has a lot of cool stuff on his page. A lot of the art he shares a lot of cool, um, you know, different styles that he's done. That we were talking about on the episode today. So you can see it all right there. Um, if you're not already doing so, make sure you're uh, hitting that subscribe button for us, that little notification bell. Uh, give it the thumbs up if you like this. Comment if you want to reach out to us. If you want to, you know, reach out to Ken in the comments, you could do that too. Yeah. And um, that's about a wrap, right? You guys have yeah. anything else? Yeah, that was yeah. great. Thank you so much for joining us, Ken. Thank you. Fun. Yeah, thank you again. Thank and, you, guys. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah. And don't go, don't go too far. Yeah. But until next time, guys, remember. Don't be the geeks.